Fire in the hole, let's cook some beef stew. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome once again to my backyard grill. What I got going on for you today is we're gonna make a European style beef stew with cognac and Dijon mustard in my black iron pot, which is just now getting warm. I've got about a half a pound of bacon. You know when the recipe starts out with bacon, it's only gonna get better from there, right? So we gotta cook down this bacon and get some bacon fat rendered out so we can cook the meat and the bacon fat. And I know you love watching bacon cook, but I'll bring you back when the bacon is almost finished cooking and we'll get it out of there and we'll prep our meat and get our meat in the pot. So stay tuned. So the bacon is rendering out the fat in the pot. I've got about two pounds of uh, stew beef here. And what I'm gonna do is season it up uh, very simply with some pepper, black pepper. That's not all the seasoning that's going into this dish, but that's what we're gonna start out with on the meat. Black pepper and some uh, kosher salt. And we're just gonna season that up real good with that. And then we're gonna take some flour. You know my favorite Wandra flour that I use. And we're just gonna dust the meat with some flour. We haven't put any kind of binder on or anything. We're just gonna dust it with the flour. Salt, pepper, and flour. I'm gonna mix that all up, get the meat kind of coated with flour and salt and pepper. And that's all, very simple. Very simple dish. You get it all coated up. And we're gonna uh, brown this off in that bacon fat. And then we're gonna remove the meat and we'll finish up with some uh, veggies and the sauce that this is gonna braise in. Because this has gotta cook for like an hour and a half in the sauce. I'm going to put a little bit more flour on there. I think I've got enough salt and pepper on there for now. Probably be adding more to this dish as we go. But I think that's enough flour on my meat coated with flour. Let me get the bacon out of the pot. Then I'll get the meat into the pot and we'll brown it. And I'll show you what that looks like. And then we'll start the process of making this uh, European style beef stew. So stay tuned. The bacon is cooked just the way I want it. It's not too crispy and not too soft. It's just the way I like it. I'm gonna get it out of there into a dish. I got plenty of rendered bacon fat to cook everything in. Get my slotted spoon here, get the bacon out of there. Yes, sir. Bacon, that's going back in the dish in a little while. First thing we gotta do now is put some of that beef in there and get that beef browned up in that bacon fat. And we're not trying to cook this beef at this point. All we want to do is get it browned up a little bit to get a little bit of a crust on it. And we have to do it in batches because we don't want to uh, crowd the pot. We don't want too much, you know, coverage here. We're not trying to cook it just yet. We just want to get a little bit of browning on there. It's starting to brown now. You can hear it sizzling. I'm going to turn it over. Ah, uh, you can see that now, can't you? Yeah, that's looking good already. Okay, let me uh, get a bowl to get the uh, meat out of, and then finish browning the meat, and we'll bring you back for the next step, so stay tuned. The beef has been browned off, and what I've got left in the pot is like a fond. What we're gonna do is throw some butter in there, a little bit of butter, and some cognac to deglaze the pot. This is, uh, Nyack imported from France for cognac. Now cognac is like brandy. It's a liqueur made from wine. I'm gonna put that in there to deglaze the pot with the cognac and the butter. So all I wanna do is get that fond up from the bottom of the pot. I might need a little bit more cognac and I need some butter because we're gonna brown the veggies in this. The meat's already been browned. So there we go. We've got the fond. That's the, uh, you know, the stuff that was stuck to the meat. The uh, flour and, and uh, seasonings that were stuck to the meat. So we've, we've kind of made a sort of a roux. Sort of a European style roux. What we're gonna do now is throw in some veggies. This is the European mirepoix. I've got carrots, onions, and celery in here. Roughly cut veggies. Not very diced up at all, and they're in that cognac now and butter. 
And I might throw a little bit more butter in there, I think. You can't have too much butter in a European style dish, I don't think. I'm gonna put that back over the fire because I had to move it off the fire to get my fond up. Carrots, onions, and celery. That's the European mirepoix as opposed to the uh, the Cajun mirepoix, which is uh, what they call the Holy Trinity. And speaking of that, I gotta go get some garlic. So let me get my veggies cooked up a little bit. It'll bring you back for the next step. Stay tuned. All right, the veggies have softened up. So what we're gonna do now is throw in some potatoes. Now, if you don't want potatoes in your beef stew, you don't have to have it. You can cook this without the potatoes and you can serve it over mashed potatoes or you can serve it over noodles or, you know, serve it over rice any way you want. But for, for my purposes today, I've decided to put some potatoes in there and I've got some nice little potatoes that I cut in half. I'm gonna stick them in there and get a little bit of cook on them. Just a little bit, right like that. Let me get them a little bit cooked up and put a little bit more butter in there. In the end, I'm probably gonna use a whole stick of butter in this dish. Plus the bacon fat. So if you're watching your weight, <laughs> steer clear of this dish. I'm watching my weight, I got it right out there where I can see it, right in front of me. Oh, look at that, don't that look good already? That is beautiful. Let's get those a little bit of cook on those potatoes. And we'll bring it back to make the next step of this. Stay tuned. The potatoes and the veggies are in there getting happy. Next thing we need is some cheater's garlic. My buddy John would call this cheater's garlic. A couple of uh, heaping teaspoons of cheater's garlic. That's garlic that's already been minced up for you. So you don't have to worry with it. You want some garlic in this dish, there's no doubt about that. Get some garlic in there. That's beautiful. Garlic. Yes, sir. Now we need, a, we need to make a braising liquid for the meat. We're gonna put some more of that cognac in there. I've put about a fourth of the bottle. I think I'm gonna put about another fourth of the bottle of cognac. I'm probably gonna finish it with some more cognac. And then we've got some mustard to season that up with. We've got some stone ground mustard. We need about a heaping teaspoon of that and we've got some gray poupon Dijon mustard we need about a heaping teaspoon of that in there get that cooked up get that mixed into the mix that's going to flavor up our beef and our potatoes and our stew this is going to be awesome folks let me tell you what it's already making my mouth water just thinking about it that mustard it's delicious. That stone ground mustard and that Dijon mustard, just delicious. The smell coming off this is incredible. And now we can put back the meat. Put back the meat, which is just going to probably fill my dish. I'm going to put back the bacon too. Put back the meat and the bacon. Get this stirred up. Get it all stirred together. That meat is by no means cooked. Anyway, it's got a, this is gonna stew for an hour and a half, but we gotta get a braising liquid. It's making my mouth water. We put our Dijon mustard and our cognac in there. What we need next is some wine. We've got some Cabernet Sauvignon. It's my favorite cheap wine. We need about a cup, about a cup of uh, Cabernet Sauvignon wine in there and then we need to uh, get enough liquid in there to cook all that so we got to put some beef stock in there and I want to make sure the beef stock comes all the way up to the top of this uh, container there you go so you can see the wine in there see that red cast of that oh man You've got the Dijon mustard, the cognac, the wine, the beef stock, all that's in there. The meat is going to stew in that for an hour and a half, maybe more. That's gonna reduce down into a beautiful sauce. The meat is going to get fork tender. The potatoes are gonna be tender. Everything is gonna to come together 
and be the most flavorful. We got one more thing we got to do. Stay tuned. So what we're going to do now is make what they call the bouquet garnet. What that is is we've got some parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme. And Craig, I want you to know how hard it was for me not to sing that song. <laughs> Craig told me not to sing, so I said I'm never going to sing. But it's very hard to say parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme with a straight face and not break into a rousing chorus of the old Simon and Garfunkel song. I'm going to take some butcher's twine and tie this up. This is my bouquet garnet. This is what the uh, Europeans use to flavor their beef stew. And they tie it up like this. I hope you can see that. So that they can fish it out later on when the cooking's done and you don't want that in there. You know, well, some of it's bound to go put in the pot. Shut up, dog. And we're gonna put our, that is my bouquet garnet. I'm gonna drop that right in the pot, stir that in. It wouldn't even hurt if I cut all these things up and stuck them in there too. That's gotta sit over for two and a half hours. So after two and a half hours have gone by, I'll bring you back and we'll plate some of that up and take a taste and drink a beer. So stay tuned. My beef stew is done. Here's the frosty root boy mug. Here's today's beer, Dogfish Head 90 Minute IPA, Imperial IPA. I've had this before. It's one of the best IPAs you can get. I think that everyone can agree on that. Uh, Dogfish Head makes some of the greatest beers going. Dogfish Head, I forgot, they're in California somewhere. Petaluma, I think, I'm not sure. It's a beautiful dark ale. Oh, look at that, Rob. Check it out, Rob, it's a, like a golden ale. Look at that. Dogfish Head Imperial IPA, our continuously hopped Imperial IPA, whose powerful malt, malt something, I don't know, I can't read it. The letters are too small for me, but look at the beautiful color of that beer. Let's take a sniff of that. Wow, you really smell the hops in that, Rob. Let's quaff the froth off it. That's delicious. I'll tell you what else is delicious. Look at my beef stew. Just before it was done cooking, I put some button mushrooms in there. You know I love me some fungus. Here's that beef. Like I said, it's fork tender. Beautiful beef. Mmm. I love Excellent. Carrots, delicious. The sauce, the gravy it's in has got the cognac flavor, the flavor of the wine. Can't be beat. The potatoes are nice and soft. Mm. I can't stop eating it. Mm. I love mushrooms too. Hey babies, this is one outstanding beef stew recipe. Give it a try. I know it's a lot of work, a lot of involved stuff, but it is delicious. I must tell you, this beer is outstanding too, Rob. You gotta try it. Dogfish Head 90 Minute Imperial IPA. Continuously hop for 90 minutes. Anyway, babies, that's my video. I'm glad I was able to get some audio on this one. Too bad the old lady couldn't come out here and take a taste of this. She doesn't like beef stew. But anyway, that's my video. Uh, see you next week. We may not cook anything good, but we will drink a beer. Bye.